<laughs> it's really hard for me to like start things or to put a finish on things. Like I, I'll start a project and not finish it. Or, you know, I'll, I'll get so anxious about how something should turn out. I won't even touch it. So when, so like, when, when it was a, a psychologist who told you this, right? Or a doctor? So did yeah, it, I, did it straight away, like sit with you? Like, yeah, totally. Or how, <laughs> or how was that? Uh, it was a process. Um, I am an avid social media user. I love TikTok. It's a wonderful <laughs> place to be, just like all social media. But there were a lot of creators who um, were talking specifically about their personal mental health experiences. And a lot of them were talking about ADHD mm -hmm. and a lot of their symptoms. And I was like, wait, I do that. Wait, I do that too. <laughs> Okay. So then I, I started looking for a therapist. The first one I ever talked to about it didn't believe me flat out was like, no, this doesn't seem like a problem. You're fine. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to get a second opinion. So I did. And the therapist that I've been working with for about six months now, we have worked out, um, you know, treatment plan for me and we check in on a weekly basis. Um, I message him when I'm feeling confused or frustrated. Uh, it's, You know, I think the the biggest hurdles I overcome are filling out paperwork, especially for the government. I hate doing it. Um, getting projects started, feeling like I have a regular schedule in my life is really important to just me functioning. Mm -hmm. And getting started on projects that are for me, nearly impossible. But when they're for someone else, like say a theater company of which I am an employee and a and a choreographer and a director, it suddenly becomes easier to make work. Mm -hmm. So now, and, and that helps me flip the, the, the script on making dance work and, and, you know, talking about, um, producing work and being visible as a trans and a queer person, because it's, it's no longer about me and my body. Mm -hmm. It's about me educating others. It's about me being representation for others. Not that I can represent every trans experience or every non-binary experience or every gay experience or mm -hmm. every yoga experience dance experience but you know what I can be is present yeah exactly so with all of my mental health issues with all of my queerness with all of my unicorn wonderfulness and mm -hmm. my gorgeous nails um there's there's a level of power that comes from that that fills me with just a little bit more self-esteem mm -hmm. and <laughs> bring me back down from this heightened level of anxiety this constantly living in trauma and brings me down to somewhat normal yeah It's, it's not easy. It's not been easy, but mm -hmm. it's definitely, uh, been awakening. Yeah. And once I started tackling these issues, um, my sleep was better. Yeah. And I started having a better relationship with food again. Mm -hmm. And suddenly my basic needs were met mm -hmm. and my body has started to relax. Yeah. 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 It's, You know, it always goes back to the body. It's like this, this is our metric for how we live. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing well, I'm not doing well. Yeah, 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 yeah. How we live and how we feel for sure. And to come back to the performing arts, um, because you're, you're writing a lot about that also in, uh, in this blog. Um, so you are, so are you, you're currently creating work, Sam, or? Yes. So, um, one of the things that I talk about is a show displaced, um, which mm -hmm. is, uh, based on the diary of a woman, Margaret Wellish, who, uh, with her family escaped Austria to the Philippines. And then from the Philippines, um, was able to move to Long Island hmm. where the, uh, the descend, her descendants still live. So, uh, my friend, Ashley, who is the founder, uh, and artistic director of IVP infinite variety productions, she wrote this because she had access to the diary and she had access to the family. Mm -hmm. So she wrote this play about how this family, this woman and her husband and her two children escaped Austria. And we actually had our, uh, we, uh, it, it went up last night on zoom hmm. and it was a huge collaborative process, uh, between another director and, um, three other actors and I made shadow puppetry for it and helped, uh, do lighting design for the parts that we could film live, uh, and with each other after quarantining and getting tested, like there was a whole rigmarole behind it mm -hmm. that went up last night nice. as the last day of Hanukkah for, um, for the Jewish community that we were able to perform for, 
Um, and it hopefully will be live soon. I can send you information on that later. Mm -hmm. but the show place was really about um, people who are escaping tyranny, who are escaping oppression. And um, through uh, my own interest in family history, I've also started creating an autobiographical work about me hmm. and my family cool. and, and all the women in my family. And there are a lot of women in my family. There's a lot of women <laughs> in everyone's family. I don't know if you knew that, but... <laughs> So there's been this, this, you know, sudden push now for me to start to explore my past and to explore the connections that I've made uh, today based on the people who came before me. Mm -hmm. And by telling their stories, it's become easier to tell my story. So uh, this play went up last night. I have my own solo autobiographical work going up somewhere in the spring. I have like one dance out of seven or eight that I need to choreograph. Hmm. And I'm the whole thing. <laughs> uh, written a bunch. I have like 17 pages of poetry and prose and monologue. And um, there's going to be paper that I fold because I also love origami and puppetry. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be this multimedia thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quite know what to call it still expo exploration still an exploration beautiful yeah. yeah so there's a lot of things that's that i'm doing still as an artist and and it it all has to come back to this physical experience that i'm having now mm -hmm. and and the stories that i'm telling I, I hope that it resonates with people especially with this place last night and getting feedback after um there's this lovely talk back where Steven Nettinger, who is the grandson of Margaret Wellish, who wrote the diary, hmm. was present. And he's he's seen other renditions of this work before. Um, and he was the one who was originally interviewed for the work as well and gave Ashley the diary. And he was so ecstatic that people could tell their stories and tell his family's story because no one really knows about it. Mm -hmm. Being able to tell stories, we're able to learn about it. We're able yeah. to grow. And an amazing quote that Ashley loves and has used in other works. Um, history doesn't repeat itself. People often repeat history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by telling these stories, by telling my story, my hope is that um, people will grow to understand what it means to be this. And by seeing this, they may recognize it in other people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the trauma that I've experienced in my life, uh, both real and, you know, self-imposed, um, won't get repeated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I don't want other trans people to experience what I've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the negative aspects anyway, I, I would love for them to experience the joys of like calling my dad and having him make a really good, funny trans joke. <laughs> and, like I am, he's not making fun of me. He's, he's poking at society and, mm -hmm. and we're both together but it's yeah. a joke he made. Like, yeah 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 how cool is that yeah like, it's I really for that to be a normal experience for people that's really beautiful because like what like for for the so the work that you were saying you, you know you guys did something last night on zoom so you know it's it's kind of how is it now with the performing arts for you then i mean it's changed a lot right because every all theaters are closed and you know how do how do you feel about working on zoom it's it's hard Hmm. It's one of the hardest things I think I've ever done. And um, there was another work that I uh, directed back at, that went up in October and it was my directorial debut and it was on zoom. <laughs> and, oh, like, well, what a thing to say. But um, I think, I think what's happened is a lot of people are realizing how important stories are. Yeah how much we need them. Like how many yeah. people, like if you look at the stock of Netflix and Amazon prime and, yeah. um, and Hulu, which still isn't publicly traded, e e even stories where everyone has, everyone's streaming has increased so much. Mm -hmm. We're trying to look for stories. Yeah. And so for small theater makers like myself and IVP and, um, other people like the crane, uh, is a theater in New York city that we actually got to film part of our play at part mm -hmm. of display. We're just trying to fill the void and we're trying to make stories and make them accessible to people who may not have had access to them. That's one of the positives of yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, because that's like, great. There's nearly even a wider audience that you can reach now because you are like, for example, I could not, you know, see your show, but now I can. Yeah. So you know, the problem with it though is is the the nature of being in front of front of another yeah. living living human being mm-hmm. is blocked. Yeah. We don't have. It. Yeah. And we blocked by this screen. Yeah. And. You know, we're connected by it as much as we are blocked. Mm-hmm. And while we have this conversation right now, wouldn't it be amazing if we had two microphones sitting in the same room? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a level of connection that really, truly only comes from being physically present. And yeah. it's a human thing. It's a living, ain't breathing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How could you explain to a tree that there's another tree on the other side of the world. <laughs> Can't feel the other tree's roots. Yeah, in the ground. no, it's totally, I totally, I totally feel you. And also I think especially with dance and acting, I mean, I have not danced, but I've definitely acted and been in lots of theater, theater performances. And you're just like the energy you also are responding to, you know, as a performer is of course also you can't really do that. I mean, I even have it with Zoom when I I've been asked to do talks or something and I'm and I'm like, are they really listening? You know, like and you kind of you, you start talking faster and you just you know, because it's so strange to not get this, you know, straight away. Like you're not having a dialogue. It's all just monologues in a way, you know? And so. it's 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 so it's partially frustrating and it's um it, it it creates a level of its own anxiety because you don't know if people are watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to to know that someone has logged on to Zoom, that they, you know, they've turned their camera off and they're muted. Hopefully, Lord. That's <laughs> what people do behind their camera screens. Right. But like <laughs> but you know, they're they're theoretically there. Mm-hmm. But you can't really prove it until they respond. Yeah. Yeah. In the theater. When I hear someone's uh, cough drop rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crinkling. Yeah. And I can hear it while I'm delivering a monologue or while I'm like dancing. Yeah. In silence. And I can hear the crinkle, crinkle or someone coughing. Yeah. Or when I do something amazing or I fall or, or something and there's the gasp. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Or, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or someone laughs. Yeah. Not there. And do you feel, do you think it's coming back? Of course, you know, we are, you know, there's hope for, for, for all of us, especially also the performance industry. Do you think it's going to be very different when it's back on again? In, there in, is, I wrote about it in, in the blog. Too. I talk about um, the, um, the gala theater in uh, yeah. Washington. Yeah. How they, they went from uh, like to 25 people or something to. Yeah. So it was like. Yeah. Over 200 people are normally able to fit in the theater at capacity, almost mm-hmm. 300. And now they're down to 25. They have one way path through the theater to enter and to exit. Um, shows are shorter because the turnover of the air in the theater, while quick, still isn't enough to prevent you from potentially contracting the virus if you're in the space too long. People have to wear their masks the whole show. Um, there's plexiglass in between the stage and the theater mm-hmm. and there's a lot of lighting choices that have to be made so that there's not light reflecting back onto the audience from mm-hmm. the plexiglass. So there's a whole lot of engineering that has to occur. They redid their entire HVAC system so that the air can turn over in the theater like six times in an hour or so. Mm. There's, there's a monumental amount of energy and effort that has to go into a theater being able to accommodate all of these needs Mm -hmm. and it's amazing they did it and they shouldn't have had to, Mm -hmm. they should have been able to take a break. They should have been able to get funding from our federal government, which has for all intents and purposes abandoned us. Um, Other theaters like Broadway and, you know, Hollywood have, have all had to stop. Yeah. 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 All theater makers are looking to our industry leaders for what to do. And, you know, there a lot of these big productions are streaming their shows live on Broadway because they've uh, they all of them are being putting being put on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know, people can watch them, but these are huge productions that yeah, in their own time make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and have millions of dollars in their budgets. Yeah, yeah, don't have that. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Be the small creators, 
it's funny because we have better and quicker access to this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go through the rigmarole of what a Broadway production would have to do to perform at the Broadway level on Zoom. Mm -hmm. 